hey, you like monsters? I got you monsters here. <laughs> I'm kind of doing like a little bit of the, the song and dance. Yeah, the song to and get dance. Them to stop because a lot of times people at conventions are, are walking like this. Hey guys, uh, welcome to Inside Comics with George McHale. Um, before we get started today, uh, if you like this content, please subscribe. Uh, it'll help uh, the channel grow. Uh, today, my guest is Jeremy Clark. Uh, dude, thanks for being on the show. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so you're an inker and artist, and I was wondering if you could uh, tell us how long have you uh, been working in the comic book industry? Well, I, I, I think uh, I've been in for almost six years as a pro. Uh, you know, I was always doodling and stuff prior to that. But if, if, you're, if you're talking about professional time in the industry, I, I think I'm creeping up on six years now, which is uh, I never thought I, I would be actually working uh, this long uh, in comics doing something that's, that's so fun. And what does an inker do? So uh, our job is, is uh, yeah, it could be a little bit uh, mysterious for folks that aren't fully familiar with the process, but essentially our job is to embellish uh, the pencils uh, that are provided to us or, or the outline or layout or, or what have you, the foundation, if you will, of a page in such a way that it elevates the, the overall um, image and to, to the final product that you ultimately see get published in the books. And so we're just one cog of the, the big machine and uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Do you use any interesting tools? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I don't know if your viewers are familiar with uh, some of the inking techniques that, that uh, we as inkers utilize, but uh, some interesting ones that they might not know about is uh, like an old nasty toothbrush that you've been like, way past its prime it might not have be good enough to to brush the old teeth anymore but you just throw some ink on it and, and create some really cool uh galaxy star effects and, and splatter effects for for blood or rubble or or just a you need a little bit of grit uh, you go to the toothbrush but otherwise it's uh you know it's it's pretty standard for me to rock a inkwell, a crow quill brush, uh, uh, just, uh, I'm a dinosaur, so I still do all the uh, traditional elements uh, that you would see in terms of making a, a page come to life. Many people are moving to creating their uh, artwork digitally. Why should a comic book artist um, stay using a physical media? Well, I mean, th there's pros and cons to both, right? And the, the instant pro to going digital would be, uh, you can do it faster. Uh, you've got a back button, uh, which is nice. So uh, you can make as many mistakes as you want. And, uh, you know, with a click of a button, you basically salvaged it and are able to do it all over again. Uh, I think the reason why I still work uh, entirely traditional is because there's a tangible element to it, right? When when fans come up to you at a show, they, they flip through a portfolio, they're looking at original art that you just simply don't get if you're working uh, digitally. Um, there's also the collectors out there. Uh, the comic book community is filled with a lot of uh, collectors, you know? It's a collecting uh, group of individuals. And so if you're working digital, you don't have the ability to provide those individuals with a uh, physical page for them to actually hang up, put on the wall, uh, do something where you can go, hey, that was the page that was published in whatever issue of whatever book. And uh, I think that's why I still work traditional. It's just something like, you know, going into a library, seeing old books and things. That, I don't know. I'm just uh, old fashioned that way, I guess. Yeah, I love having... Um you know, original artwork and, you know, putting it on my walls. And, and you know, when I, when I write a book and I have, uh, you know, uh, the art from it, and, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. And it's, uh, to me, it kind of blows my mind that people are, are not always doing that. So we were hanging out uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. We went to uh, like a hookah bar and <laughs> had uh, 
had some Mediterranean food and listened to some like bad karaoke. It was a good night, but I don't really remember too much of it. And uh, you mentioned that uh, you like David Finch. Uh, he's like one of your uh, you know, uh, favorite artists working in the industry. Um, yeah, you, at that time, David was doing some really unique um, kind of stuff in terms of how he was doing his hatching and, and feathering and uh, some of the like little tick marks. It wasn't quite Arthur Adams-esque, but he had, like a, a nice value and depth to the work. And so I, I think I gravitated to his work uh, when we were sitting there uh, eating away at that, that bar. Yeah, I think that was kind of one of the, the highlights in terms of me of more modern illustrators uh, in the industry at the time. His uh, artwork seems like it would be really uh, challenging to ink because there's uh, there's just so much uh, detail and nuance and stuff like that. How would you tackle like so many lines? It just it seems like it would be really daunting. Yeah, I think that everybody pro approaches his work in in a slightly different way, and they all have subtle nuances that make them stand out, um, so that you know, oh, this individual is working on him at this period, or uh, so, and so I think everybody kind of brings their own artistic flair uh, to approaching his pencils. And while it would be, um, you know, quite time consuming, I would imagine, given all the, the level of detail that he puts into his work, I think that it would be very rewarding at the end of the day because uh, you could feel accomplished about, you know, to finishing that splash page or that that big swooping double page, you know, splash of Batman swooping across buildings or something. I, I think that maybe once you finish it, like all that time that you would feel so much more worth it. And so uh, would it be daunting? Absolutely. I think because there has been so many good people that have worked on him in the past, uh, you know, you don't want to be the guy where everybody's like, oh, that was the worst, <laughs> you know? Um, so normally you're on the convention circuit quite a lot. Um, how many conventions do you usually do in a year? So when we're not in the middle of a pandemic, I am generally doing about 25. I'll probably start slimming them down to, to around maybe 20 on average, you know, cut out maybe five, 10 and, and try to utilize that time towards uh, just producing more work in the studio. And at the end of the day, that's what people want is content, so. And it seems like you're always like having these amazing experiences at conventions, um, meeting all sorts of uh, you know famous uh, people and and uh, and just having a blast at your booth. Um, is there any like kind of uh, fun stories or or weird requests or anything like that that's happened on the on the convention road? Oh wow! I mean, I I think there we don't have nearly enough time to cover all <laughs> all of those because there 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 have been quite a few uh, over the years. But I I think that being at shows and interacting with fans is just fun in general. If you can wake up and your job is to literally just go and talk about superheroes and and have fun uh, interactions with people, then how could you possibly not uh, feel energetic about that? You know, there's there's so much good uh, that that can come from those experiences, and I think no matter where I go, I try to get a little bit of the culture or uh, nuances that are associated with that area, whether it be sightseeing or looking at uh, cool architecture or trying to go to see whatever. It doesn't even necessarily have to be comic book related. I just want to enjoy. Uh, the area that I'm in and the people that are, are uh, along for the ride, so. Yeah, I ran into you at uh, the Vancouver convention and uh, you're off yeah. to, to try and get into the, the Batwoman set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, it's funny you mentioned that because we actually found it. Uh, we found it, we got like a whole entire uh, itinerary schedule of when they were supposed to be shooting and at what locations and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do silly things like that all the time. If I, if I think I can get away with it, <laughs> I'll try to, I'll try to, you know, go to engage in things that maybe I, I shouldn't otherwise. But I, I feel like, hey, I'm only here for a few days. What's the worst that could happen anyways? <laughs> so I, I don't know. I think it's just about uh, trying to, to have fun, uh, enjoy life. So uh, with the 
conventions kind of slowing right down this year. Uh, you have been doing some in-store signings. Yeah, so I think that might be the trend that a lot of us uh, end up uh, modeling uh, is trying to do smaller, uh, you know, more concise events like a store signing that it's tailored to those individuals that are showing up. I mean, they're there to, to see you, right? Like it's not, you're not trying to pull somebody random that may or may not have been interested in looking at your stuff to begin with. If they're there at a store signing, then obviously uh, you, they're already there. <laughs> like, you, know, they're, you don't have to you don't have to try to hawk them down or do any kind of kind of crazy circus acts in order to uh, have them look at your stuff. So uh, for me, yeah, I've been setting up a lot of store signings. I just did one uh, this past weekend in Tennessee for uh, the TMNT Last Ronin number one uh, variant that Raymond Gay, myself, and Juan Fernandez worked on. And I've got another one this weekend in uh, Mesa, Arizona, which is a little suburb of uh, the Phoenix area. And uh, that's for the punchline number one uh, variant cover that I did with Gotham City Comics, also with Ray and Juan. So uh, we've got a really cool team uh, that's producing a lot of a lot of quality work right now and yeah i know what you mean about the uh circus type antics for me <laughs> uh, i've got my monster book and when people are walking by my booth i've like um i've gone ahead and like been like hey you like monsters i got your monsters here <laughs> i'm kind of doing like a little bit of the the song and dance yeah the song and get dance. Them to stop because a lot of times people at conventions are, are walking like this and they're just not really aware of like what's going on around them so if you can kind of uh pull them over you can tell them about your your books and a lot of times they're like the hugest uh you know monster fans or whatever and uh, and they wouldn't have known if i wouldn't have called them over um some of the covers that you guys have put together recently are just looking great um the, the punchline one uh Samurai uh, Grandpa for Source Samurai Press. Grandpa. Yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked about that. That should be uh, releasing here in mid-December. Um, Juan, I actually spoke with earlier today before we got on uh, here, and he said uh, the colors for it will be wrapped up sometime this week. So, uh, you know, cross your fingers. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing the home run that I know he can put together. Uh, and, and that's the beauty of working in comics is it's a very collaborative uh, process. You know, it's not ever one individual uh, that's, uh, you know, taken, uh, I guess, kudos for the entire thing. I mean, it, it is a process. We do work together constantly. And um, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm ultimately just one cog of that very big machine and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. So, you know that scene in Mallrats? Um, how much do you hate that guy? And do you ever get that sort of thing? Well, you know, I've had people in the past, uh, not often, but it does happen, uh, come up, you know, at a show or a convention, or they think it's, you know, funny or amusing to to quote the line, uh, you know, you're a tracer or whatever from from uh, mall rats and. You know, it, it used to bother me early on in my career, I guess, because I was still trying to prove something. And uh, I, I feel like over time, uh, the, the, the work tends to speak for itself now. And I don't have to feel so obligated to try to, like, convince somebody that I'm doing something good. I feel if the, 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 the work looks good, then you can, you know, gauge your own uh conclusions based off of that so you never gotten a fist fight over anything like that no no i mean i i've i've definitely uh grumbled under my breath probably some choice words but uh never have i um really exploded on anybody over it uh i try to just segue it into some kind of a joke and and you know hopefully that tailors it away to where it was a minor blip on the the map for that day. And I, I want to thank you for uh, for being on the show today, Jeremy. Um, yeah, if people absolutely. want to follow you. Uh, what's your What's your Instagram? What's your social media? So it's real easy for me. It's just uh, at Jeremy Clark Art. So if you can remember my name and the word art, uh, you can pretty much find me anywhere. That's uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, the website is jeremyclarkart.com. And so 
Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the content that you see there. I, I try to post the new things almost every day. I, I'm not religious about it, but I definitely try. And uh, in fact, uh, you guys will get to see uh, later today for whoever is tuning in. Um, the new OMG, a horror anthology uh, Kickstarter that just launched last night. I'm going to be posting up the official uh, cover art, uh, fully colored up. Yeah, OMG looks like a super cool uh, horror anthology. And, uh, and the work that you guys put together for it turned out amazing. Yeah, there's a there's a really cool Spider Queen um, character in it that she like commands these big giant alpha spiders and stuff, and has this very witch blade esque feel to her and her like can cavernous throne and and webs and it's just uh it's it's really cool it's dark imagery uh, it's not your your superhero stuff it's uh much more gothic in nature and I think that was. Uh, fun to to get to explore and and do something slightly different than than what I'm used to. Awesome! Thank you so much, Jeremy, for being on the show. Uh, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me.